This place is one of our weekly treats. Getting down here to visit to see somebody coming up to see you. The crack was 92 when they came up with all the scale from the outside. Daddled up here. Anticipation. Wondering what the crack was going to be. You're just glad to get out of the blocks for a while. The mundane day to day life of the blocks. But when you come in here, you met different people. All your old friends from outside, not all your old friends, but someone from outside there that you had come in the jail at the same time. You had your obligatory prison guard with you. Uh huh. In we go. This would have been the way. This would have been. The... That's why I'm really sure you didn't get. See, this is the way the visitors come in. This is the way your visitors would have come in. We would have come in another way down a long tunnel. Just roughly this place is at the back of H4. So your visitors would have come in here and then went through. Up in here to the big visiting rooms. There was two or three visiting rooms. And what happened was then we had been brought in, sat down in one of our cubicles, and then your visitors were brought up to see you. You sat down, there'd have been screws sitting at the top, looking down, maybe one or two walking up and down the aisles to make sure that uh, nothing untoward was happening. But they weren't always as vigilant as I thought they were. And things did get passed back and forward through ingenuity. And every time they caught on to one way, something else was sorted out in another. But this would definitely would have been the, um, the, the visitors coming in. We had been shipped with a minibus down the other way, down a long tunnel around the corner, and then this is, we would never have been out this way. Even look at the chairs. <laughs> the chairs are very comfortable. Uh, but maybe you can come in this way. Now, come in this way. Everything bars. Photography, the other door in, visitors' toilets. Ah, here's your. But what have happened here was we would have come in that door down here. Your screw would have sat in here overlooking. It'd have given them the pass. We would have been sitting, sitting down, been down to whatever cubic it was. Down you came. Come in this door, remember? Right, take a seat. We would have sat here, and at that stage in 1981, the cubicle, the tables were facing the other way. And um, as I say, you had your screw walking up and down, walking up and down, watching, see is anything passing. So you see that you can't pass anything below. Anything you had to do was done with the you had to get yourself in here at the highest point to make sure that this man couldn't see you or the other ones. Anything caught doing anything like that, their visit was stopped automatically. It was the same when you were out on an appeal visit. You could have turned around and got a visit during the day, maybe once a day for 15 minutes. But what happened was when your solicitor came up, if you spoke about anything other than your case, your visit was terminated. You had to, on your legal, on that particular visit during your appeal, you had to speak about just your case and nothing else. You couldn't ask how your family is, you couldn't ask, was it raining outside? All you had to do was talk about the case. But this was a half hour <laughs> weekly bus run, if you want to call it, the excursion, where you got all the scale and you got all the news, whether good news or bad news. They tried to always keep the bad news from you. 
And this is where your wife came, your kids have been maybe running up, you've maybe brought out a couple of wee sweets for them. The orderly would have been up and down, you could have got a wee drop of diluted orange. They had a smoke. Cigarettes too, not roll ups. They'd have brought their, their fags in. They could have, if I remember right now, just they could have brought the cigarettes in and you had to bring the lighter out. So there was no there was no two of one. And you were allowed to bring a fag back with you, one or two cigarettes back with you. But uh, if I remember right too, I think these were slightly bigger then as well. I think, you know, you were far more taken in, you were far more hidden. These, these, these visiting ones came in later years. It's actually brighter and more modern. The other ones look more like a, a wooden shelter, a wooden porta cabin, uh, hastily put together for visits. But um, this, is, this is where you came. This is a, the. <laughs> this was a terrible experience when you when you get sentenced in the, from the Crumlin Road Jail, and you were brought up in the long case. The first visit, you had to come out here, and you're, you know, I'm sure everybody don't have shook their head. This is, <laughs> this is a different world, lovely. It was a different world from the Crum because the Crum was a medieval, looked like a medieval jail, but this is sort of modern and black and white, and everything was sterile. But. Uh, you know, the first question of what's it like? Is it all right? Is it any better in the crumb? Is it look? Are you happy enough? You know, how do you be happy in in jail? You know, but uh, many a many a, a happy half an hour was spent in here. Many are depressing when you're walking away. You know, you walked away at times, or in your head would have been. Oh my God, what am I going to do? I have another two years, three years, one year, ten years to do. But it didn't matter how long you had to do, leaving your loved ones, especially your family, was, um, it was a whole different experience. But again, when you had your, the problem was too, that you were only allowed to one visit, and it was very hard not to get your wife and your kids up on that visit. But on the odd occasion, or the few occasions, especially for a married man, when he got his friends up, you know, the, it was banter, it was joking, it was slagging, it was messing, and you were full of beans, and you were getting back, you were bouncing. Where, and uh, the, the family visit was a whole different, a whole different perspective. But uh, and again, it's, in one visit, one visit a week is very, very, and in some cases, people one visit a month, and in other cases, people who didn't take visits at all. And sometimes you said to yourself, was it better not taking visits because if you got, you tended to read into everything what people said. You know, it was like ladders, you know, if you got 20 lines in a ladder, you read 40 lines. And if people says, didn't mean it and it come out the wrong way, you maybe would have dwelt on it to the following week in the visit. And it would have stayed in your head. And the first thing, as soon as you come out to the visit the next time, bang, get a hit it. But that's, this is what it is. I'd like to, we'll go out and we'll have a look at the sea where we were getting searched and stuff coming in. There's an airlock in here, I must show you. But you had to go in, close the grill, thirsty, and open the grill on the other side. But there's, a, there's two of these, I think there's two to three of these visiting rooms. I think this is B. There's A, B, C, and D. Yeah, this is the way it was. You come in that way, right down. That's the first I've actually walked up and down here. Never walked up and down here. And sometimes you had, <laughs> sometimes you had your preference for a visiting box. You know, it wasn't the first time you went round the wing and said, back to the wing and says, yes, I got number, whatever it may be. And there might have been a good one because it was a blind spot. Some down there might have been a good one because it might have been a blind spot. But sometimes you might have got number, just for the sake of saying it, number three. 
And this is where the screws would have normally stood and had a yarn. I mean, not particularly here, but I'll just give you an example. And that meant there that no matter what happened, you know, you're, you were in constant, you were in constant view. And you come back, and that was one of the things you always said, I've got a bothered box a day. Didn't like that box at all. So you're always conscious the next time you come out, I hope I get number, whatever it may be, one, 15, eight, six. And you mightn't get here one, one month, and you mightn't get back in here again, you might have been in the other visiting area. It was just pot luck. You couldn't have put, you couldn't have put money on it. You couldn't have put money on it. And it was nearly always the same screws that was here all the time. All right, so back down, leaving the visits. The last wave goodbye when they're walking out the door and back to get searched. Now, let me see if I can remember this bit. <clears throat> yeah, it's down this way. Down we go, down the tunnel. Visiting A, just exactly the same as B. And we'll go down this tunnel. Down the tunnel, the big long tunnel. It's something that uh, we always remember. You had your obligatory screw with you. You had your wee card, Miss Han, with all your details on it. And in my case, it was a black book for some unknown reason. And uh, up we came. This was always the worst part of the visit, is walking, walking back. You knew you weren't going to see anybody. You knew you weren't going to see anybody for another week. So all you had left now was the ladder that they left in. And you, you sat and you read that. And again, you read 20 lanes, but you found 40 lanes in between it. You know? This is your visiting area here as we come through, where we would have come in. We would have been searched, strip searched, mostly. Not always, but mostly. You'd have never got two lazy screws on, but I'll give you a quick frisk. But mostly, you mostly got the strip. You became immune to it. I've often heard people saying, why? How did you get used to that? I could never do that strip search. I could never do this. I could never do that. Believe you me, when you had to, you had to do it. I must show you in here first. I think this is important. This is the bit. This is the bit we would have come in. We would have got stopped out there in the van, approximately, that's roughly H4. We would have got stopped in the van there. I would have walked up, walked round, sat from the screw, in the came, walked in, Fan would have sat there, maybe went away, got another visit, got another visitor. He knew then, it had been the guts of an hour by the time you get in, get searched, get, your visitors get brought up in the other van. We would have got marched in here, brought in, sat down here, and this is where you would have met all the different people from different blocks. You know, it wasn't unknown that you could have swapped things back and forward in here. But there's a more luck in here, let me see. When we come in here, this is where other prisoners would have been seated. You may have met friends, you might meet somebody from the same block, somebody from another block that you hadn't seen in a number of years. And then you were called. You were brought down to this airlock, which what happened was this was opened. From in here, you stepped inside. Once you stepped inside, this was closed behind you and you were in that airlock. The only way you could not get back out again, the only way that you could go was go in there. 
which when it would go in them, it'll show you what happened was the screws then had to open it from the other side. It's all mechanical. There was no buzzers or anything. It was all hand, hand done. You'd have walked down here. You'd have walked in through here. And what happened then was, this is, this is the other side of your airlock here. You would have been in here. You would, have, you would have been in here, and then the screw in this side would have pulled that open. And you would have then out to camp. And that's what would have happened then. But what happened, same again in this, you're brought into that room, your screw called you, everything was checked out, your name, address, or your name and where you're from, what block, your number. But if I remember right, my number in the cache was 521. It wouldn't be a thing that I used on any occasion, but people needed to do it for when it was on your ladder, it was on the top of your ladders, it was on the, when they had to send anything in, they had to put the, 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 the number on it. Otherwise, there's always a possibility there was somebody with the same name in the particular wing or in the particular jail and stuff could have went missing. But again, back to the airlock, two, three. What happened was there's a door there that would have then taken us. Your screw with you again. Always remember you're with a screw all the time. He would have then walked you about here, walked you down here, straight out the door, and down into the visits. So when you come back from the visits, you come in here, airlock again, same procedure, out straight out and away and back into the van. Searched in there, that middle bit is where you get searched to make sure that you had not got anything. Well, it was a mirror below you, stripped down. The favorite one was take the top off you first. Took the top off, you were standing naked or from the top up. Then they put, they searched all your clothes, put that on. Then the bottom shoes, socks off. Again, you take, take your shoes or take your trousers off. And then what happened was that it made you drop your underpants down to your ankles. And then I made you bend over the look, or some give you the cursory search. But we need quick look, although that some of them were heathens. Some of them just seemed to enjoy it. Or other ones just give you the cursory search. You lifted your wee bag, whether it was a Mars bar or something in it for the child, and uh, away you went. With with the some of the with the blanket men in particular, what they done was with the conforming prisoners and the blanket men. The blanket men would have got the, the rough end of the stick, you know, the mirror was not, the, what they'd have done in there, they'd have stripped them completely and done everything to hassle them. Sometimes with the conforming prisoners, it was a cursory one, whatever mood the screws were in, or whatever particular screw it was. Some people, some screws, I suppose it's human nature, some um, screws have, or some people have their own way of doing things. I found some days it was all right, I found some days I got stripped bent over and the, in the mouth and all this. Some days you didn't. Some days when you were taking stuff out with a wee tax and your wee stretch and seal, you could have got away with it under your tongue or up and around your mouth. Other days you had to put it in another office, obvious, and that's what you had to do. It's just was pat luck at times, but um, it was your week. It was still it was the weekly, monthly, or whatever it may be. Mine was normally normally weekly. Other guys were monthly, other guys didn't take visits at all over a number of years. And you have to put, you know, take your hat off then like. But I suppose they got in a routine and says they weren't going through the hassle because when you left to visit, you were mostly on a downer because you were going to miss, miss your family for another week or month or whatever it may be. I always seem to take mine on a Thursday because we had a thing going here that um, it was an unwritten rule that the Belfast men did not take Saturdays, tried not to take Saturday visits because Saturdays were only a morning visit then 
And what happened was, what, what they used to do was, we used to say, no, we'll not take any visits. That'll do the countryman. A <laughs> derogatory term, I know, but countryman meant anything from Lurgan, Derry, Magara, Dungiven, or Ma, anywhere like that there, because they'd always have to travel further. Belfast, as you know, is only six or seven miles down the road. But um, the countrymen, it was, a say, always, it was a standard joke with countrymen, and they always seemed, we always tried to give them the Saturday visits because of that sort of situation. It all seems so different. It seems so different. Sometimes you'd have got a screw there who would have spoke to you. Other times there's ones where they ignored you. Just, just so different. And it was so caged then. You know, you often said to yourself, even if I get rid of that screw, where would it go? How could I get over that? I'd be lost. And that was basically what I think the, the, what they tried to do with the isolation. You know, everything was in a blacked out van. Everything was a quick, quick, quick. And you know, you seen nothing. You seen, you seen very little. I suppose if you did do a bit of walking about, you could have put two and two and you got the ge geography of the place. But they kept it in fairness, they kept it, uh, it was the most secure, was the most secure jail in Europe. But like everything else, there's always somebody will come up with a plan to beat it. And that goes for everywhere around the world, you know. But uh, when you're here, you know, there's definitely you say to yourself, there's no way of getting out of this place. No way. But it happened. And on a couple of occasions, it happened. This, this is a bit here, but it's a good bit. The anticipation. Going to the visit, coming back was the worst part. <laughs> Going to your fully anticipation. Good to see the wife, good to see the kids, mother or father, whoever it may be. But uh, this was the enjoyable bit. It was like a, <laughs> a day's out. When you get back after the visit on a Thursday, mine was on a Thursday. You said to yourself, I get this weekend, weekend over, it'll be nearly Thursday again. Same sort of thing. But it seems so, it seems so wide open here, so, I know it's dilapidated a bit now, but it seems so clean and fresh and, as I say, you come up here and it depends what visiting area you were going to. It brought you to the same place. So it did. Brought you to the same place. You walked up and the screw gave your card and your book to what would be basically a receptionist screw. And he would have then delegated your box. Then what would have happened was your visitor to come in, the screw would have done the same thing. And that's when your half an hour then started. When the half an hour was over, screw got your card, then he came and sat it on the table, just like that there. He squeezed in over a couple of minutes out of it. And then, right, you ready? Let's go. You stood up, kissed your wife, kissed your kids, got the hair, last sort of kiss, hug. You went that way. Visitors went that way, and they might have been in the North Country. Because you wouldn't have seen them you wouldn't have seen them for another week.
It's hard to put everything into perspective. This is their wee. This is their wee hut. See, there's the. That's the lock. The door. Lock the doors open. Close this door here. That was automatically open. There's all your electrics. Here's all your blocks. A, B, C, D, E, F. Visits, details. All your phone numbers. There's money. Break glass for key. <laughs> There's electric still on. What's the? Buzzing away there. Hi. <laughs> First D is just the same, just the exact same. Electronic door, electronic gate. So it is, it's just the same. Now this one looks in better nick, doesn't it? This looks in a wee bit better nick. Again, there's what I tell you about the cups, where you get your wee diluted orange, or, or the orderly would have looked after you. 10p or something that was in at the time. 10p for a wee thing I diluted. And the kids loved it. <laughs> there we go. And that's your electronic door again, isn't it? They get out. No, that's your ordinary door, the electronic doors behind it. Mm -hmm. It was definitely <laughs> a city in a city. This basically would have been just what was done before, you know, walked out and walked and got searched and... Ah, it's just the same thing. Just the same thing. Down the stairs, again, another set of stairs down. But we're better... We're better going to the ones we know because... I know you called it the maze, but sometimes it's like a maze. It's, uh... It brings back some memories. It brings back some memories. So it does. You sit there and you say to yourself sometimes, Oh God. And you wonder though, there's some people that are done 13, 14 years in here. I'm sure they could say, tell you some stories. Yeah. Just to be stores in there. There we are, there's our Christmas tree. One of the Christmas trees I put in there to, to brighten the visits up. I'm just wondering what it, I don't think it would have helped too much. Christmas would be, a, I'm sure, a sorry item for them when you have the leg of Liam Avril who escaped on Christmas, on a Christmas party. There's their cups and their wee. Their own wee kitchen. This is what have been our legal visits now. You, you would have come up here again when somebody's on an appeal. They would have come up here and uh, seen their solicitor. So you would have spoke with him all about your case, how things were going. Again, everything electronic. Doors, electronic, airlock again. Everything was an airlock. And then they would have come in this way. This is, these are bigger visits too, do you see that? These are far bigger visits. Everything was all, everything was all done for a reason. Even it's kids, look. <laughs> kids high chair. 29. The rest of them are all only up to 15 or something, aren't they? 29 visits. The amount of visiting area and the amount of visiting space I had too was phenomenal. They must have learned from that real porta cabin built in the had. 
of uh, just everybody getting herded in. Now this was all more controlled, all set out in such a way, basically like cattle pens, I suppose, where everything then could be organised, everything could be shut down. As I say, once they close that door, there, close that door, nobody could move. And if that was closed, then nobody could get at this guy here, who again would have his control panel and his intercom. This is intercom. This is his order. Override, locked. All the lights. All the Z cars. He had a set there. Two way mirror. He could have watched in next door. That was a two way mirror. He could have sat there self contained. And then. Back again. But this is a this is a big building too when you look around. You know, I never thought it was such a size. But it's only now when you when you look around, you say to yourself, what size was this place? I keep saying 360 acres. <laughs> It's hard to comprehend what 360 acres is, but when they put buildings of this magnitude, along with the H blocks, the workshops, football pitches, gym, you put that all in the hospital, put that all in the, in the context, you realize what size it is. I tell you what, there must have been some screws working here at its height. Definitely. There's been some screws. Big button. She's a big button. 